Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you, colleagues. You know, it's always a pleasure to be in the Parliament for budget because it reminds you of how time flies, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker. And you know, to always give reason to give thanks and praise to be around for another year. Mr. Speaker, um, I want to first thank my constituents of Shows Al Saltibus for the confidence they have reposed in me to represent on their behalf, Mr. Speaker, and to also to ensure them that I will continue to engage the government on their behalf, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker. This morning, when I woke up, Mr. Deputy Speaker, as usual, I give thanks and praise, and then I have my coffee. And while having my coffee, I usually browse through messages that come to my phone, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And this morning, I got a particularly refreshing jingle. Um, and I must say, it, it, it did sort of raise my spirits and put me in a very positive light to, for the day ahead, Mr. Speaker. And it was something that um, the, a, a Calypsonian, my uh, bachelor, he has a jingle, which I think just recently came out, called, uh, and he was going, Bonjour, ça a fait, est ou bien, moi qu'a souhaité ou en bon journée. I would sing it for you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, but, you know, and, uh, Mr. Speaker, it, it, the, the, the positive vibes I received from that, I, I thought, you know, uh, maybe I should ask the, the, the member for Denry North, you know, that maybe this is something that we should encourage our young students, you know, to, you know, to sort of a competition, to create some sort of positive, you know, um, jingle, you know, so that can be used to, to, to give that sort of positive vibe if our students, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, so that they can, you know, um, look forward to the next one and, you know, they can sing it along and create that sort of synergies among students and among schools, Mr. Speaker, see, you know, who can outdo the other. I think it's a, it's a good way to, 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 to enhance our creativity our, 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 um, in terms of, you know, our young ones. But as, as, we, hear, as we come here today, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and as I reflect on the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 23-24, the sum of $1,856,719,000. And what has led us to this point? I am reminded of a metaphor. And, 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 and it's a pity my friend from Labry is not there because normally, you know, he's the one who normally um, gives budgets various names. But I'm reminded of a metaphor that I was used in Parliament many years ago. And the expression at the time, Mr. Deputy Speaker, was milking the bull. I don't know if you can remember that, Mr. Deputy Speaker, but that was an expression used by former member for Beaufort North, um, uh, Mr. Cecil, Honorable Cecil Lee, at the time, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I thought that that, that expression, Mr. Speaker, was very apt to what has brought this budget to us and, and, and what is currently happening, Mr. Speaker. And I will explain a little as I, as I, as I go further into my presentation. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I am of the view that this government won the majority vote based on the fact that the populace felt that the mantra of putting people first would be down to a greater social conscience and target especially the many vulnerable sectors in our society. And Mr. Speaker, I, I, I use that premise because I want your indulgence as I provide an element of historic comparison to our current performance and the budget before us. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in the Prime Minister's statement yesterday, um, which I'm yet to receive and I heard the I, I heard the, the Prime Minister indicate that um, there's no obligation to provide that, but I believe that, 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 that he is in that because 
because this is something that we have received in the past. Um, Hold on, member for... Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, the only thing that I recall that opposition member... Hold on, um, he's on a point of order, can you take your seat? Sure. Only thing I, what point of order? I recall what point of order? Is missing in the house mm -hmm. that opposition members got was the estimates of expenditure. And it used to come on Saturdays, on the weekend. Yeah, that's right. And we used to have to come to debate it on the Tuesday. Yeah, sure. In this case, they got the estimates of expenditure from Wednesday or Thursday. I cannot recall. And I've been in this parliament much longer than the member for sure ever getting after a record of the estimates, after a discussion estimates, any speech for the Minister of Finance. And if I'm wrong, I believe. I, I like the, the minister, the member for Shoes, to tell me on what occasion did, when the Prime Minister delivered, the Minister delivered that he got a copy of the estimates. I like, if that is, I will. Only for purpose. Only it happens when in the budget, and I can tell you on the 25th of April, when we do the budget, He's going to get a copy of the budget statement after. That has never didn't happen last year. It's never happened. It's never happened. But if he, if he wants to believe himself and say that, I have no problems. Mr. Speaker, remember for Shuzel, yeah. um, remember for Cassius, this has said that the, um, <coughs> you, Mr. Lene, I'll say that. The, no statement, no statement has been issued, and it is the convention of this House to give the um, appropriation speech when the Prime Minister makes the, the appropriation bill, they circulate the speech. Um, but I don't know the front speech, my apologies, but I don't know it to be customary to pass on. So, can you not, um, if, you, if you cannot prove this, can you um, refrain from the statement? Mr. Um, member, member, me hold on. Member for Shozel, members, members, members. Um, member for CAS, for Miku South, um, <clears throat> can you? I understand that you you're there with you are the member, but can you please understand that I am in the chair. Um, I'm speaking to the member for Chozel, and you all will afford him to speak in silence. If I'm asking a question, I expect, and the same thing for the members on the other side. And the member is going to. So, member for Chozel, we're going to carry the business of this house. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. However, Mr. Des Deputy Speaker, I, as rightfully indicated by the member for Castries, this Prime Minister, the Prime Minister, he has been in this house way longer than me. And of, obviously, his retention as it relates to previous um, House sittings. But I can recall, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that when we were in office, as soon as the Prime Minister would have finished his statement, even when we were walking out, we would have gotten copies, would have been circulated to everybody. Yes. Not this, not Remember which this, statement? This, it is a statement made by the Prime Minister. Okay, okay we'll, 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 we'll move forward. Okay, we'll move forward. Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we'll move, we'll move forward. We'll move forward. Let's carry on, Member for Shoza. Yeah, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Mr. S as I was indicating, um, as I was indicating, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Members, members, member for Castri member for Castries is, member for Castries is, member for Miku South, member for Castries is, member for Castries is. You know, and I, member for Miku South, can we please allow the member for Chozel to proceed? Member, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I, I, am, I, 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 am, I am aware that the Honourable Prime Minister and my good friend, they couldn't wait for me to speak because they needed that sort of, you know... Carry on, member for Chozel. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Prime Minister in his statement yesterday gleefully indicated that on coming into office, his government had to deal with outstanding payables in excess of $200 million. We heard, we heard that from the Prime Minister yesterday, that on coming into office, his government had to deal with outstanding payables in excess of $200 million. And, and, and Mr. Deputy Speaker, it is amazing 
how the government selectively uses the challenges of COVID when it suits their agenda. And I say that, Mr. Speaker, and, 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 and there we have replete examples in, in this parliament where, um, you know, the, the members have used COVID when it suits the agenda. And I, and I just want to, to use two of them, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, yesterday, the, the, the Prime Minister spoke to how destructive COVID was. He indicated that COVID made a lot of people poorer, and in some cases, he made some, it made some people destitute. That's a, that, that, that is deep to recognize that, that, that that's what COVID did, Mr. Speaker. I also, I also want to quote the, the member for, for, for Soufre, and, 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 and I was happy she actually made mention of it in her statement earlier today, um, when she made a statement in July last year, and she said, Mr. Deputy Speaker, as a country, we have lived through a dramatic period of setback since March 2020, when we started to feel the effects of the pandemic. During this time, Mr. Speaker, we were hit harder than any other region in the world, both in terms of per capita death and economic contraction, given our openness as a small island development state. That is a document of the House um, that the member for Sufra. And, and I use just these two examples, Ms. Mr. Speaker, to make my point in that the government has continuously indicated that the last administration performed so bad and left a mess when they came in office, Mr. Speaker. But they refused, Mr. Speaker, to acknowledge the impact COVID had on the economy of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I refer, I refer to the peak of COVID. I refer to the peak of COVID. And I refer, I refer to year 2020, year 2021, Mr. Speaker. Year over year, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we had a shortfall in revenue. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, the, the, the back and forth is nice, but can I be heard? Members, can you allow the member for Shozel to be heard in silence, please? Mr. Speaker, as I indicated, the peak of COVID, year 2020-2021, year over year, we experienced a shortfall in revenue of over $240 million, Mr. Speaker. That's in revenue, Mr. Speaker, year over year. Mr. Speaker, in that same period, Mr. Speaker, we had to honor payment of bonds of almost 200,000, 200, 200 million, Mr. Speaker, 200 million, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, you know, you know very well, Mr. Deputy Speaker, honoring our commitments for bonds and treasury bills is significant because the reputational, the reputational risk to our country if we're not able to honor these, Mr. Speaker. In addition to that, Mr. Deputy Speaker, as a very direct result of COVID, increases in expenditure oh year over year was over 60 million. When you add all of that, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we're talking about a $500 million in shortfall year over year. Yet still, we talk about 500 million, yet still, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the member for Castries East, Minister of Finance, um, um, Prime Minister, speaks to forfeiting $40 million in, in, in terms of fuel revenue, Mr. Speaker. There is no comparison in terms of the, what we had to deal with under COVID and what the, the Prime Minister has to deal with in terms of, 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 of um, forfeiting revenue of $40 million. After what this country went through, Mr. Speaker, in COVID, 
after what this country went through in COVID, the only place we could have gone was up. The only place we could have gone up was up, barring significant natural disasters or, or World War Three, Mr. Speaker. Okay? That is a fact. That is a fact. There is no way we could have gone any lower than where we were. And, and yet, and, and you know, it is, you know, it is really sad, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that the government would have on what they got there and not acknowledging the factors that brought us there. It is a sad day, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm, I'm very happy to have heard the Prime Minister indicate that, you know, the government has performed even better than anticipated. And, and you know, um, I heard my, my good friend, now in the chair, who sits right immediately to my left, this morning when he was using cricket as an analogy, and, and he said, he said that when the rains came, instead of putting the covers to cover the pitch and, and, and go take shelter, we were dancing on the pitch. But really and truly, what we were doing on the pitch, Mr. Deputy Speaker, was planting seeds, the seeds that are being enjoyed now. That's what is happening, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Because we heard, we heard the member from, from Viewfort North. We heard the member from Viewfort North. We heard the member from Viewfort North indicate the, for the first time in so many years, enjoying a surplus of 29.5. You know, obviously, that's, that's, that's wonderful, but it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight. There was something that set that in motion. And as a matter of fact, to come to this house and indicate to the people of St. Lucia that this economy is doing so well that you now have a surplus, and yet still, so many of the vulnerable people that you, you profess to protect are still paying significant high prices for fuel, Mr. Speaker. To the point, and, and you know, Mr. Speaker, I, I, paying high prices for fuel is one thing, but the effect of the, the electricity, the effect of the electricity on the vulnerable people, Mr. Speaker, is significant. Of course, the fuel prices affect because it, it, the government sets the stage for, 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 for the surcharge that, 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 that Lucy Lake, Lucy, Lucy Lake the, print. But anyway. The, the, the surcharge on electricity. What Mr. Speaker. The surcharge. Mr. What Speaker, I dare say that this government would have performed even better had they not stopped so many of the projects. Yeah. I dare say. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. I want to make, I wish to make some observations and ask some questions under, various, under some various heads um, as it relates to, to, to the budget before us. Um, I would confess, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that while the Prime Minister indicated we got the, the estimates three days, four days, it is quite significant to go through within that period, Mr. Speaker. And so, um, the bulk of my contribution would be made in the, when we're discussing the poll, when you have the policy debate. But today, Mr. Speaker, I wish to make some observations and ask some questions, and hopefully some answers could be given by the, the Prime Minister in his rebuttal or the, the, the speakers who, who will be coming forward. Mr. Speaker, I wish to go to head 35, Department of Justice. Mr. Speaker, I want to say categorically that while I was absent for the debate on the CCJ, I am on record in, when we had the discussion in this parliament with some of the judges from the CCJ and some of the staff on indicating that I support the CCJ, but I had concerns with regards to our local system and how you know, we need to really focus on addressing some of our local court systems, you know, before going to that, um, to, to, to the next level, Mr. Speaker. And I raise that, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> because 
as I, as I browse through the Department of Justice <coughs> um, and budget, and I indicated head 45, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and again, I, I said it's an observation, and maybe I can be guided further down the line unless um, the allocation is somewhere else. But I don't <coughs> see anything to give any reassurance with regards to what we're currently facing with our courts currently, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have, for example, in Denry, Mr. Speaker, over here, the, 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 the magistrate court has not been performing. And we have, that, we have that similar scenario ranging from Denry all the way to Sufre, where the courts have been closed down for one reason or the other. And we all know the saying, Mr. Deputy Speaker, justice denied. Justice delayed is justice denied. Mr. Speak, Mr. Deputy Speaker, my concern is that I don't see anything in, 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 under this department to provide me with any comfort that there is going to be some sort of emphasis on rectifying that situation. Um, we've been speaking about the halls of justice. Um, I do, I do, so, so I welcome any word to show that you know, I, I, I may be misled based on, 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 on what I'm seeing, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am, however, very pleased that um, under the key programs we see the full digitization of vital records, Mr. Speaker, and I am pleased to be, have been associated based on being part of the last administration when we um, started that under the DigiGov program, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mrs. I move, I move, <laughs> you know, my, my, my colleague, on, I move, I move to head 46, Mr. Deputy Speaker, um, head 46, which um, is a favorite to my colleague on the left. At 36. And I'm, I'm very pleased, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to see the increase in allocation. Obviously, um, it is required based on you know, what is happening in, in, in our country today. Um, but I do have two concerns. Um, and, and we will speak a little bit more on that in the, in the policy, Mrs. Mr. But I do have two concerns. One is that with the emphasis that we're speaking on in terms of curbing crime, I'm somehow disappointed that we're only looking to increase personnel by 15. I, I thought we would have seen you know, a, a, a marked um, increase in personnel because um, the number of people in, 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 in the police force currently, I believe, is significantly below what is required to police the entire island and to deal with some of the growing issues from a country that is, uh, that is growing. So that is one of the concerns that I have here. Um, I also note, I also note with some concern, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that um, under, the, under key program strategies, one of the areas speaks to provide professional service to clients by processing traveling documents controlling migration flows and enforcing immigration for the review period. And when we look to the achievements and the progress of this strategy, there is, is, is blank. So it, it says to me that there's nothing that has been done to address that particular issue. I go further to look at the number of passports received and processed. And for 2022-2023, we saw a figure of 5,165 passports processed, and under 2324, we see a similar figure of 5,165, which says to me, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that the issue we are currently facing with people coming in at 5 o'clock in the morning to stand on a line, Mr. Speaker, will be going on for a very long time. Um, we will not see any, any increase in efficiency in terms of addressing that problem where you know, many of our senior citizens travel from the South and have to deal with that. So it's a concern to me, 
if, if there is something that can give me a reassurance down the line, I would gladly um, uh, 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 um, accept that. I'm also concerned, Mr. Speaker, um, with regards to um, the intention by the department to increase fourfold the, the, the seizure of, of weapons and, and firearms, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I applaud, I applaud the, the, the police officers for, for, you know, for, for giving themselves that reach. But I don't see, again, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the reintroduction of the K-9 units or the you know, additional scanners to provide that sort of assistance. My, my, colleague, my colleague on my left asked, and I will answer, what's the fascination with the K-9 units? Uh, and, 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 and I will answer, I will answer, because it has been proven that the K-9 unit does not recognize friends or relations. The K-9 unit sniffs you out, and if you have an illegal firearm, it will, it will bring that to the attention of whoever is in charge of that, of that unit. So... It's very important that we take out the, the human factor where there may be some sort of prejudice, okay? And, you know, let, let, let the canine unit, as I said, who does not recognize, you know, colleagues or friends to, 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 to stop that stem which we recognize is, is, is um, yeah. So, you know, you can't rent it at the rate. You can't rent it rent it before. Well, is there value to life now? So, I move, I move um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to head 41, agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I will say, and I have indicated that to the member for Denry, Denry South, I did not know the member prior to 2021 elections. And um, the first time I met him was at a function at Shoesel Fisheries. And we had a chat, and I told him, my spirit goes with him. Okay, and um, I said, <laughs> I, I say that I say that, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I say that, Mr. Deputy Speaker, because I say that, Mr. Deputy Speaker, because must ask yourself what you did wrong, because look who you got instead. The one that doesn't go for your spirit. <laughs> I say that, Mr. Deputy Speaker, because I, I recognize... That's why you don't make it peace with yourself. And you all got Richard. Congratulations. Congratulations. I say that, Mr. Deputy Speaker, because the, the, the member for Denry South, you know, has, you know, been speaking quite a bit about trying to revitalize the banana the banana market, trying to revitalize um, the, 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 the banana growers, and also... Are you lost Trinidad? Imagine the member from the South is disturbing you. Ask the speaker to stop him. I was protecting him. I'm protecting him. I'll, I'll, I'll tell my friend on the other side to cool out. Um, yeah, so, Mr. Deputy Speaker, as I said, I, I'm a bit concerned because I've heard the members speak quite a bit about, you know, trying to get the banana, um, you know, uh, market, you know, in a better place, Mr. Speaker. But when I look in the estimates, Mr. Speaker, bananas were mentioned, I think, twice. And when I, when I look at it, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the monies allocated to the banana management unit is really and truly speaks to paying of salaries. Um, I don't see, for example, under the banana productivity improvement, there's zero. So I don't see the emphasis with regards to assisting the, 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 the banana farmers in terms of you know, production, in terms of shipping logistics. But I heard, I heard the members speak to um, uh, an interested party who, in the region, um, and I think you said it was from Trinidad. But I do have a concern because from my previous experience, 
in the Ministry of Commerce trying to assist um, a manufacturer, the challenges we had from Trinidad, the foreign currency. And, um, you know, it is something we need to be very careful of that our, our farmers do not send bananas to Trinidad in the hope of getting the money in a timely fashion. We might have some issues. Um, I know the U.S. dollar because of, you know, it's a... I know there is, a, at one time, we had to seek the assistance of the ECCB to assist um, Winera, and, and I don't know if it is something you can explore, but it, 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 it could pose a problem and could bring our banana farmers into serious hardships if that matter is not addressed. Um, we know the challenges we have with the UK market, and um, I've based on listening to previous people speak in the agricultural um, um, field, I have, I have listened to quite a few big farmers and there seemed to be a thought that the focus for the UK market should really be on specific farmers and not open to everybody. You identify four or five main farmers and you get them to, 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 to produce, to, to ship to, to the UK, um, and then based on that success, we can bring in additional, um, but the challenges we have with the UK market, we cannot um, destroy our reputation with some of the bad habits that the, 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 some of the farmers um, think. I, I also spoke, I, I, I also heard the member speak and, and and the member for Beaufort South was not there. Had he been there maybe he would have he would have prompted the, the member accordingly. But the member for agriculture the member for, for, for Denry South he indicated that for the very first time the marketing board would be getting a subvention from government. Now while that may be true, that might may be, and, and, and I'm happy that you because I know I know you'd know better. Um, the marketing board has had to be rescued by successive governments, governments time and time again. And we're not talking about the $250,000 that you spoke about, but significant sums. Likewise, likewise the fish marketing board. And so the statement, you know, um, is not quite accurate. Okay. I would not, my, my, my friend from before North, I will not go into a... Uh, 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 an argument with bananas because okay. but Mr. Deputy Speaker I am really really um, uh, I would like to advise my friends on the other side that I am the one on the on the on the podium Mr. members 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 yes. members <laughs> Members, the chair allows you all to go through the back and forth, but please allow the member for Chozel to continue his contribution. Go ahead, Mr. member. Yeah, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I was a bit saddened um, when my, my friend, I said, from Denry South, sort of gave a en passant um, notification of the $5.7 million to the, the Chozel fish port. You know, that kind of um, um, allocation. We should have gotten a round of applause around the table, you know. Um, but it's, you, you know, you did it so hurriedly. You did, you did it so hurriedly. <laughs> but so, Mr. S um, Mr. Speaker, I, I move. I move briefly, and, and my my friend, I move to head 46, and I would like you to come back into the room. Um, <laughs> he walks out. Head 46. Um, which speaks to tourism, and, 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 and I'm hoping, Mr. Deputy Speaker, you allow me to raise it with you when he comes back. But I note, I note with some concern that um, in last year's budget, there was an amount that was negotiated under the OECS Tourism Community Project for 200,000 US, equaling $540,000. And that was directed at rehabilitating the Chozel 
Arts and Crafts Center. I'm, uh, member, member for Castries South, I'm happy and I will repeat for your, yes. I'm, I'm very concerned, Member for Castries South, that an amount of almost $540,000 that was in last year's budget, which was allocated to the Schoesel Handicraft Center, which was something that was negotiated as a grant actually, um, which was supposed to have been for the rehabilitation of the Schoesel Handicraft Center. And also it had a, a training component with it. Um, I did not see it in this year's budget and um, I, I don't know whether it has been repurposed. And it concerns me that, um, you know, for the focus that we have been speaking as it relates to, you know, our creative industries, and, and, and I don't know if it's, you know, member feels that the, 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 the 5.7 that I got from the Japanese is sufficient and I should not get anything else. But I'm very concerned that it is not there because we were looking forward particularly to the training component um, and, and the crafters were looking forward to it. So it, it, it concerns me. Now, I, very good. You know, um, the, 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 the member, I would also want to, and I, I, to speak to um, some heritage sites that were acquired under the last administration's tenure. And the, the intention was that we would have created some green spaces. And um, I, I have not seen anything you know, to suggest that the, any attention would be given to these, to these spaces. Um, I'm hoping, member for, um, for you, um, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, I will, I, will, I will tell you, the Deputy Speaker is doing a very good job, you know. I, 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 <laughs> um, through you, Mr. Speaker, I, I'm directed at the, the member for Castro South, um, because I know he would be in close um, conversation with the developers for the Sabisha project, that um, that particular heritage site um, you know, that, that, that we should be very careful that there's no encroachment and, and, and they're not provided the latitude to, 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 to um, encroach on, on, on the intentions for the Shozel people's patrimony. Um, I note Carnival is back. I know there hasn't been an increase in Carnival. Um, and it's kind of disappointing because I could tell the member for Castries South that Chozel Saldibus was actually the first community, and some may want to argue that, Sufre may want to argue that, but Chozel Saldibus was the first community to actually have community carnival. Very first. We had a Queen show, I'll never forget that. And um, it's kind of disappointing that we were not engaged in terms of, you know, um, you know having, well, I, I should say maybe I'm not aware whether, whether the council was engaged because that sort of correspondence flies over my head. I don't get, I don't get um, any sort of um, notification. So, but if they were not, you know, it's kind of disappointing because you know we were always, you know, looking forward to that sort of um, activity. I wish to move to um, head 48. Um, member for Cashmere Central is here, and I'm hoping. You know, maybe he could also um, provide some clarification where needs be. But I speak, Mr. Speak, Mr. Speaker, to under the the housing housing program, housing program. I notice, I notice that there seem to have been a reduction in terms of what was allocated last year and to what was in the budget, an allocation of reduction of almost half. And um, it got, well, and, and, and that's why you were not in, and I said I'm making observations and asking questions, so when you get to present, you will, you will, okay. Okay, so, because it concerns me that based on the, what, I, what I recognize as a reduction in the housing program, and, and we've heard from members across the room how important it is that housing assistance to 
the vulnerable in our various communities. Albeit I had some challenges in, in, in getting the assistance that was originally um, agreed upon, but um, I'm looking forward to um, some, some, yeah. But um, I also note member, uh, Mr. Speaker, through you to the member of, um, to the member of um, Castries Central that um, the, the, the number of households whose standard of living was improved through the housing assistance program, building material grants and labor um, and, and again, that is because of, of, of the, the, the fact that there, there, there seem to be um, some additional information required. 2022-2023, it's indicated that 200 people got assistance, and in the new year, we will, well, not, the, it, it will be increased to 1,000. Um, but it, it, so as I said, it concerns me that we can increase the numbers, but with a reduced budget. But as you indicated, you will um, advise me as to um, the, the true situation there. Um, the member for Viewfort North is absent. I wish he was there because I, again, in asking questions and seeking clarification, It, there seemed to be a, a, a sort of a gap that is very, very unclear to me, um, particularly when I look at um, item line 1101, which speaks to salaries, OKU. And I notice a significant reduction in salaries from 34,541, 770, 2022, 2023, to an amount of 20,000, 20,702,762. 20, Member for View Fort North, I was just seeking your um, indulgence here in terms of maybe the Prime Minister in his rebuttal. And, and I don't know if there is something that I'm missing. I don't know if full disclosure has not yet been made. Um, I remember some uh, parliaments ago we came in here to guarantee um, loans for OKEU and I am not sure if that is part of this whole scenario as to whether there's going to be some shift from the, 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 the hospital as we know it, whether there's going to be, a, 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 it's going to be privatized, but there's something there that's not clear at all and I am seeking some sort of in, um, um, clarity because that's a significant difference in salaries. And um, I think if there is that sort of um, move that's been made, you know, you know, we should get that sort of, of, of full disclosure. Um, well, let's, let's not forget where Millennium Heights started. Eh? Let's not forget. My good friend. Okay. So, so yeah, but, but, but come full disclosure. Anyway, so... I, I want to, I also want Mr. Speaker to, <clears throat> to ask the member for, for Viewfort North, and I think we, we share the same sentiments when it comes to that with regards to senior citizens' home. The senior citizens' home, as I understand it, may have about 25 wards. Um, I do understand at St. Jude's, we have quite a few people who really and truly should be in a senior citizens' home, but they seem to have been taking a permanent, restaurant, permanent residence at at, um, at St. Jude's. And, um, you know, I don't see anything in the budget here to, to, to recognize any sort of um, increased capacity at the senior citizen's home. Well, well I'm, I'm looking for your clarification at, at a later date, yeah. <laughs> LPM. Okay, okay. Well, the member for Viewford North is because Viewford South is indicating to me that there is an allocation because. I, I believe around the island we are seeing the need for quite a few um, people who, who require that sort of care and attention. I don't want and to be embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. You're looking out for me. 
Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, it is very, it is very glaring in the because I remember members of the government side, you know, having a field day when we were in office, as it relates to the amount of money um, allocated to consultancies, Mr. Speaker, and I notice, and I notice the 122 million dollars for consultancy, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, very glaring in, in, in this year's in this year's estimate. So, the 122 million. So there is a a sort of a you know. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll come to CDP in a while. I'll come to it because we have to give Jack his jacket. Um, um, the the <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I yeah I. I, I will be I will be I will be concluding very soon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I speak to, and I heard um, I can't, cannot quite remember whether it was the Prime Minister or another member who made note that for the first time they will be assisting the Cerebral Palsy Association and farmers. I am very happy to hear that, um, 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 Mr. Mr. Speaker. Um, but I note I note that. There is a matter that I wish um, to be addressed. The, 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 the member for Viewfort for, for Castries North as the Minister for Physical Planning. Um, there is an issue, the farmers with disabilities, when we were in office, Mr. Speaker, they came to me and we allocated about five acres to them so that they could have done their, their farming. Because while they have disability and many of them cannot do the work, farmers with disability, yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that I said. I'm talking about the land that we allocated for them. I spoke to them very recently, and they indicated to me that that lease has not been finalized. And as a result of that, some funding agencies that they Member for Swazel, you have 10 minutes left. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be running up. So, um, Member for View, um, Castries North, if you could follow up on, on that lease for the, the farmers, it would be appreciated. Um, sorry? Farmers with disability? No, no, no. Um, the, the, the member, the member for, the member for Castries Southeast, and I, I, I must say I was happy to see him in the parliament this morning. He spoke about the bus in, in his constituency, and um, I, 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 so he was encouraging, you know, larger con constituencies. And I, I should tell him that actually we have a bus in Shrewsbury, Salty bus. We do have a bus which is um, actually dedicated to senior citizens, but it is a bus that must be 100 years old, a 14-seater, um, uh, as old as the senior citizens that they carry, yes. Um, and that was, that, that was donated many, many years ago. And I must commend the, the, the administrator, and I will mention the name, Mary Pierre, you know, and Mr. Speaker, we've made light, or in fact, the government have made light of the, of you know, the, the, the fundraising that we had when we were having our balls, Mr. Speaker. But we must not underestimate the impact, the funds that were raised, you know, in, in, in some of these things. Because at one point, I remember, we raised over $400,000, and that association got $25,000 to assist with the program because they were not getting the kind of support. So, Mr. Speaker, you know, we play our politics, but I think sometimes there's an element that we have to look at the human element and, and you know, stay away from that. Um, I, I also wish to um, speak to the member for, Mr. Speaker, through you, with regards to um, road rehabilitation. And I had a, 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 a I, I spoke to the member with regards to a concern, and it's not just Schwozel, but I recognize it happens in other areas in St. Lucia, where cement trucks drop cement on our roads and they are not, they are not penalized. They, they do that with impunity. And in fact, in Rivadore currently, we have a situation where on the left side of the road, when you're going up, significant portion of the road has concrete. Vehicles coming up move to the other side of the road, and that's an accident waiting to happen. So I'm hoping that the minister can attend to that as soon as possible to, to, to deal with that. The member for um, Grosile spoke 
to the playing fields, Mr. Speaker, and I, I, I wish he was here to hear the concern that I have to one of our main playing fields in Lafag, um, where we had June Creole um, hosted last year, and albeit that as the parliamentary rep, I was not consulted or had no engagement, if it all to it, only towards the end, Mr. Speaker, the field, the field had quite a bit of damage from that activity, Mr. Speaker, and the, the people who use the field uh, uh, are complaining, and I'm hoping that we can see some sort of allocation to, you know, re-level that field so that, um, you know, we don't get injuries. On, 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 on. Uh, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, um, I, I, I have quite a bit to say on the youth economy, but I'll, I'll leave that for the, 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 the next debate um, when we discuss policy, Mr. Speaker. Um, I must say, uh, Mr. Speaker, that the community of Shuzel Saldibus seem to be one of the communities that's most sought after right now, where a lot of people want to come to live, retire, relax. The member for Beaufort South is quite happy, um, you know, in the community, despite the fact that, you know, you are stranger. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, I want I want to remind. You know, remind the Prime Minister that, um, you know, I'm the parliamentary rep. And Mr. your family is from there, Mr. Prime Minister. Yes, in fact, most of St. Lucians have roots in Chosel, if you... But, but, but I, I must, you know, um, and I've, I've always been that kind of individual, I don't play politics, thing. I must thank the Prime Minister for the allocation that he provided to me and the CDP, despite the fact that he has said, despite the fact that he has said that there are members in his cabinet who... who who, who would not like to see that happen. Oh, that's right, that's but, right, yeah. but, Mr. Speaker, and you, member for, through you, Mr. Speaker, the member for Denry North, has said, has said that maybe we're experiencing a new day. And, and, and if we're experiencing a new day, let's, let's because remember when you all were in opposition, this is one of the things you all fought for, even today, in the presentation of you fought North. He spoke, he spoke about that egregious, um, 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 you know, um, behavior, and in terms of targeting the, the, but let us, you know, I, my concern, Mr. Speaker, is that there are too many things. We, we, we'll deal with Paul next time around. No worry, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. My concern, honestly, and I think, you know, we, we have to we have to do things differently. We have to do differently. Is that we have to do things differently? We cannot we cannot as a government spend money. And when a government changes, assets are left to deteriorate. Who pays for that? Who pays for that, Mr. Speaker? Okay. So we need we need these things, Mr. Speaker, to be addressed. Let's stop being myopic in our view from a political lens, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Let's try to unite our country. It's very important, Mr. Speaker. Um, but I'm very concerned with regards to you know the lack of order. Order. And I, I, I know I, I, in, in, the, in the policy debate, I will speak more as to, you know, how I wish, you know, our community would have, been, would have been treated, Mr. Speaker. But that being said, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity, and I look forward to the next um, debate in April to discuss the policy. Thank you.